behalf of Mr. Curtis. Okay, Mr. Curtis? Yes, please. Um, we're gracious enough to be here today to try to uh, make a kilometer flight. That's uh, 3,280 feet. We're actually going to try to get slightly farther than a kilometer. We're going to go for a little gusto here and rub it in the Wright brother's face. Yeah. Ah, right. Wright brothers uh, turned down the opportunity for us, uh, for them to, to partake in this competition. And uh, Mr. Curtis has stepped up, and our mechanic team and myself, we've gotten together and we've, uh, we've tweaked it a little bit, put some edge on it, and I, I believe we're going to get over, over a kilometer, sir. I think we're going to do it. And if it works, we'll win a big silver trophy. <laughs> and, uh, and Mr. Curtis, Mr. Mr. Curtis, you, you you like trophies, sir. I've seen your barn and your shop, and, and you do like trophies. I think we're going to do it today. Good. So, and, um, and I don't know if you've all got this. And twenty-five thousand dollars. That's correct. This is what we got uh, for a dollar today. So it, I know you paid a dollar to get in. Um, I know that's a lot, but uh, but uh, I think it's well worth it. We're going to break. We're going to set some history here today. Uh, Scientific America Cup competition. And in which we uh, we're going to win twenty five thousand dollars if we make this, Mr. Curtis. So twenty five thousand dollars. So and a solid solid silver sculpture. So we're very excited. We're very excited indeed. So thank you all for coming. Just got excited. Um, uh, yeah, if you have got any excited. questions for us? You know, we're very excited. So any questions for us? I've met some of you. I've seen some of you over at the other field for the festivities. I'm glad you could show up and bring your friends, families. Any questions for us? I don't know. I don't trust that thing. <laughs> well, I'm a mechanic. I don't, I don't trust that thing. There. There could be a spike from the Wright brothers. That could be some. Oh. So one of the reasons that the Wright brothers turned this down was because they had to uh, modify their uh, aerodrome with wheels, and they are currently still launching it with a catapult, and they did not want to modify their their aircraft. Uh, ours, of course, already has wheels on it, and it's a, a natural for this competition. It's already been flown three times. The, uh, the uh, ailerons are of uh, uh, Alexander Graham Bell's design. Uh, they're a tetrahedron instead of uh, a stressed I curvature. I have not seen I haven't seen, no, I haven't seen, seen Mr. Bell either. No. Uh, Mr. Bell actually named the aircraft the June Bug, uh, mostly because the June Bug itself has hard shell wings that it glides with and then small inner wings that uh, propel the, the June bug through the air, much like uh, that aircraft over there. Huh. We're excited. I think we're going to make it, sir. Congratulations. Sir. Good luck to you, sir. Good, Good luck. Good luck to all of us. Thank you, Mr. Smelly. Ladies. No? Where is your shop located? Uh, it's in, right in Hammondsport. Somebody was asking me that earlier. Right downtown Hammondsport. Yeah. Yes. Oh. oh. The power plant for the, I work on it, so I'm kind of excited. It's an eight, well, maybe you should tell them. Mr. No, it's, a, it's an eight-cylinder, 40-horsepower engine. Uh, one of the reasons that the Curtis engines are so popular with uh, other manufacturers, uh, there's a gentleman, there was a gentleman here earlier that wants to put one on a, a balloon of some sort. Uh, he's purchased a couple of the engines from us. Um, one of the biggest reasons that they use them is that they are, uh, not from a cast block. They are individually machined cylinders and and uh, components that are are bolted together and makes them quite a bit lighter and and easier to maintain than, than other conventional engines. Do you have a next project? Uh, yes, we're going to try to put floats on this airplane and see if it uh, see if it'll take off from the lake. Very good. Yes, we've actually uh, well we we did a little color scheme uh, with the wings. Uh, on this particular model. Does anybody know why they're yellow? Does anybody know why the wings are yellow? Because it's a pretty color. It's a pretty color, that <laughs> works. Um, the process itself, uh, the original process, was not uh, was not conducive to sunlight. What's, uh, what process do we use now? Uh, oh, the, turpentine, the turpentine and gasoline, gasoline and, uh, um, and, and wax. And, and wax. wax. Uh, we added ochre to it so that the photographer could actually see the airplane better. White wings don't photograph very well. It also helps us in, in our redesign every time that we, we do a redesign. So it's a PR stunt. Well, it's <laughs> well, sort of. The Wright brothers, I think, they're playing the flyer, isn't it? Yeah, and they don't have good photographs. And they don't have good photographs. So. Of course, they don't have me. That's right, Harry. I don't have you. Outstanding. You got a question? 
Yes, sir. Did you save any pieces for posterity of the original June bug? Are they all gone? Actually, in this aerodrome three, we utilized parts from the first two. That's what I meant, but then after the three, did you use parts out of the three? That actually the... hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Oh. But... <laughs> I mean, give us no, a little... no, the sad part is, is that it's fished out of the lake, stuck in a boathouse, and it rots and goes away. Oh. That's what actually happens to the original airplane. We It'll know happen. Make It'll it. happen. We're going to do it. Yes, it will. We're going to do it. Thank All you, right, Jack. We're going to win it. When so. you hear that Curtis motor start, that's the sound of the future, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's the sound of the future. <laughs> the sound of the future. <laughs> do you use Cadillac like Traverse on your engine? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Something about a catalyst, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, maybe an acceleration product. I think it'll be a while before we get cattle in the air. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it actually Mr. no. Smell. A catalyst. Yeah, yeah. Brown cows, green cows. It's a list. Yeah, get it. <laughs> Any other questions? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a pleasure to see you all here. <laughs> We're going to fly the quarter scale replica of the Curtis June bug this afternoon in just a few minutes. Um, we're about one day after the original flight of the Curtis June bug. He did that on July 4th of 1908 and he actually flew right down through this valley somewhere and perhaps even landed out there at the end of the cornfield. We're not exactly sure exactly where that was but our flight is going to be along this runway when Glenn did his, uh, he flew down about one and a half kilometers, and I believe the altitude was somewhere in the 15 to 20 foot range. He dodged around some hedgerows, hedgerows and he dodged around some uh, grapevines and that type of thing. And uh, finally got to the end of the clear area, and he said, uh-oh, i got to set it down. And that was the first publicly announced flight in the United States. Uh, he notified the people in New York about the uh, Scientific American Award it, that was offered for the first airplane flight to take off and land and fly at least one kilometer. And even though some others had flown at least that distance, they always did it in secret. And Glenn announced that he was doing this um, on July 4th. People came down, they had picnics, it was a warm sunny day, not unlike what we've got today. And um, so we're going to give this one a try. This scale model here was built from photographs, from uh, patent drawings, and other documents that we were able to obtain from the Curtis Museum. Uh, nothing of the original June bug exists. Uh, there are no plans. And Curtis, uh, he had a habit of using an airplane, learning what he needed from it, and then moving to the next one. And the June bug was the third one in his uh, source of development. And uh, this one, I think, was the last one that actually had the elevator located in the front. Um, it's an unusual wing configuration, having the double curves like that. But the two things that stand out here is he had ailerons that were hinged, movable ailerons, which was a, a first. And also the tricycle gear. There are three wheels, the two wheels in the rear, one wheel in the front. And that was something that became very, very popular throughout uh, aircraft design. Um, this one is flying on 10 cells of lithium polymer batteries, uh, somewhat similar to the batteries you might find in your cell phones or iPods or that type of thing, uh, only these are quite a bit more powerful. Uh, and when you hear the sound of the engine, that will be basically the sound of the propeller today. Um, Glenn flew his on an 8-cylinder, uh, 40-horsepower V8 motor. Um, we have the replica motor inside here. But uh, it's it's not producing anything uh, related to the power. Let's get it on. Ha, ha, ha.